<laughs> hey everyone, sorry I'm late. My commander game went until five in the morning. So for today's class, I'm just going to show a movie and take a nap. Pretty sweet, huh? Hey everyone, my name is Wedge. Today I'm here to talk to you about a brand new magic format. Yeah, I know. It's called Elder Dragon Highlander. It's a 100 card singleton format. You make a deck of 99 cards and one of the original Elder Dragons from Legends leads your army against other EDH decks. Let's take a look at some of these new and exciting generals, shall we? Oh, this is old by the way. The first of our amazing Elder Dragons is Arcata Sabbath. Two colorless, two white, two blue, and two green for a 7-7 Elder Dragon with flying, and as long as they aren't attacking untapped creatures you control, get plus zero, plus two, including Arcadis. It's really out of date at this first part, but later in the video it gets to tricolor commander shells, so that's, it's good stuff, that stuff's still good, so just get through this beginning, okay? Next up is Chromium. Two colorless, two white, two blue, and two black for another 7-7 seven, seven Elder Dragon with flying and Rampage 2. That means whenever it becomes blocked, it gets plus two, plus two until end of turn for each creature blocking it beyond the first. <laughs> Wowza! <sighs> Still not impressed? Okay, how about Palladium Moors? It's two colorless, two white, two red, and two green for a 7-7 seven, seven Elder Dragon with flying and trample. Yeah, trample. Don't have to worry about the staple of every format, Stormcrow. Chump blocking this monster, trample goes right over. Now, yeah, and only eight mana. Oh, the lame. Who could possibly say this is lame? Just, okay, now we're getting serious. Vivictus Osmati is two colorless, two black, two red, and two green for a 7-7 seven, seven Elder Dragon with flying. Get this. You can spend one black, one red, or one green to give it plus one, plus zero oh until end of turn. Yeah, crazy. That's called versatility. Okay, the, uh, let me fast forward past this, maybe. What's your problem? These are awesome generals. Commanders, and no, they are not. Oh yeah? Well, we've saved the best for last, Nicol Bolas. Don't let his intellectual demeanor fool you. Bolas is a living legend. Unaffordable two colorless, two blue, two black, and two red for a 7-7 seven, seven Elder Dragon with flying. Get this. When he deals damage to an opponent, they discard their entire hand. Yeah, the whole thing. Not even limited to combat damage. This ability is revolutionary. All of these cards are terrible. Eight mana to bring out? Yeah, Doomblade. What now? Yeah, well, your Doomblade has no legal target because Bolas is black, so it, it fizzles. Uh, uh, oh. Oh, oops. Wait, no, oh. Oh, is it my turn now? Cast Invisibility on Bolas, swing for seven, you discard your hand. Hey, the next time you use removal, make sure the target actually dies. Duh. Many Magic the Gathering players ask the question, When's the next episode of Dies to Removal? The answer to that question is right now. Welcome to Dies to Removal Episode 4, Commander. Now this is probably the most requested topic that we've had since even before we started the podcast. And certainly once we began it, Commander, Commander, Commander. Such a popular format, such a good time, and so many questions that we're going to answer today. With me as always, from the Mana Source, the man himself, Wedge. Wedge, how you doing? Good, I'm good. Yeah, it's, I knew eventually, I mean, we, we said episode three was going to be about Commander, but even before we started the podcast, it's true. I mean, Commander was easily the most asked for topic, and it just, it really goes to show how big it is in the community and how much people care about it. So I'm really, I'm really excited to do this episode. I think, I think there's a lot that, you know, viewers want to hear about, and we have a lot to say, so it's going to be good. Yeah, I, it does. Commander does occupy a very special place in the community. It's not exactly. I always feel it's strange when people refer to Commander as a casual format. I mean, I know what they're saying, but Commander is something else. It's in its own category because people are incredibly competitive with Commander, and yet there is this 
absolute desire for the format to be fun and enjoyable. People become so obsessed with it. People feel it reflects them, their choice in commander, the colors that they play. People make dozens upon dozens of commander decks in some cases. I'm certainly guilty of that last one. I've got a drawer full of them. So I don't think that commander is as easily dismissed as just a casual format. Maybe it once was back when it first emerged and it was just called Elder Dragon Highlander and you took a Highlander deck and you added an Elder Dragon to it and conformed all the colors to one of those original five Elder Dragon color identities. But I don't know that it's as simple as a casual format anymore because Highland, there's a lot of very competitive, yeah. spiky commander no, I, builds. I agree. I, I think uh, when I was... Whenever I would meet somebody who I was trying to explain Commander to, like a friend who used to play and was coming back, uh, I would never use the word casual. How I would explain it was it is the format for self-expression and customization. Because if there's, think about it, if there's any format in the world designed to let you do anything you want to do, it's pretty much Commander. Like that's, so I, I totally agree with you. It's definitely not casual or it's it's not, when you think of casual, you shouldn't be thinking of Commander it's definitely in a world of its own and just based on what you can do with it. It's, I understand how you can't, you can't group it with anything. It doesn't go with anything else besides itself. Really? No, no that's no, true. Totally, and totally and that's there. probably why it, it has such a special place in magic players hearts and why it's the most requested topic that we've heard about. And I think that with other content creators uh, are always hearing just more, 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 more commander. So uh, let's, let's, what was your first, let's just get right to it, shall we? Let's do it. What was your, let's do it. I want to know what was your first commander deck? How did you first hear about commander? What was your first build, your impressions? Did you like the format right, right. away? Were you, were you reluctant? Tell me about like what you remember about first hearing about commander. Was it back when it was still called elder? Dra By the way, r real quick before we start, I get asked a lot, what's the difference between mm -hmm. Elder Dragon Highlander EDH and Commander? And there is no difference. The only difference is in the name because Elder Dragon Highlander is Commander, but Wizards of the Coast chose for many reasons to, when they endorsed it, not call it EDH any longer. Uh, that largely had to do with their concern that Highlander was a copyrighted term, the idea of there can be only one, and this was what the casual players who invented it called it, and so Wizards of the Coast opted instead to rename it Commander, but EDH is Commander. I can see Elder that being Dragon so confusing Highlander. for like newer yeah. players who come in, and they hear, because it's, I, I don't think I've seen a name stick around so much as EDH has stuck with a lot of players. They just, instinctively, they just say it, you know? Not a yeah. lot of people call Vintage Type 1 or Standard Type 2 anymore. No. But Commander, EDH is everywhere. Even in titles of videos that we post, EDH slash Commander, it's searched almost the exact same amount. It's insane. I, th I, think, the pro I think the issue with that is, is that a lot of old-timey players, such as myself, who knew it as Elder Dragon yeah. Highlander first or EDH first, or who surround themselves with a lot of old timey players as well. A lot of my friends and people that I play with in my play group are also old timey players. And it's just naturally what you're going to call it. You're not going to be too impressed with Wizards saying, hey, listen, because of the Highlander movies, we don't want to product this uh, as highlander or elder dragon highlander so we're going to call it commander instead it really doesn't concern right. us down at the card shop and yeah, so no it's <laughs> just what you're comfortable now it's like that's your problem yeah. wizards of the coast not mine uh but uh so i still call it eda and edh just really solidified as what commander is called for a lot of people yeah and so i get a lot of questions well wait what's the difference between edh and commander and, and there is no difference one is just the old name for it uh, like uh, Bug and Junk were the old names for the cons here we plans. Go. <laughs> and here we go with that. Yeah. But we're not talking cons. We're not talking Bug and Junk versus Sultai. And, yeah, and what we're going to hold the dive down there. Let's just oh, go right over that. that <laughs> Wedge, how'd you hear about Commander? How'd Commander. you hear about it? What was your first Commander deck and build? Do you remember? Right. Yeah, I, uh, I definitely heard about it during the Elder Dragon Highlander you know, before Wizards really took it on. There were a lot of whispers about it. A lot of people were talking about it. But like other casual formats, I didn't really want to go near it until I knew that it was something. I didn't care that much, honestly. 
it was really when Wizards uh, printed the first Commander specific products, the um, the original five Commander decks, like the the political puppets one, right? Um, all them, and it was then when it kind of just hit, like it just turned on for me. It was like you know, Wizards doesn't back stuff like this very often. They're clearly going full dive into Commander, and it's just it would be irresponsible not to at least know what's going on. And it didn't. It didn't take long to love the format and uh, start building my first deck, which was a Drana Colostria Blood Chief. Is uh for those yeah. for those of you who don't know, it's a Rise of the Eldrazi five mana legendary creature vampire vampire. Uh, because my first commander deck was vampires. Because not because I went out of my way to get vampires. Just I had vampires. Like it's what I had. Didn't have a lot of money, and it was commander. Everything at that time was people just building with what they had, you know, just got really big, at least in my play group. Uh, it just got big. So we all just built what we had. And I liked vampires and I really just wanted to play with Baron Sanger. I don't know. That's just me though. I, you know, <laughs> but I feel that's like tribal is where a lot of people start. I feel like it just makes the most sense for a lot of players to like enter into the format that way. Well, tribal is very big. I think not just for people entering into the format, but for people playing the format, mm-hmm. because again, there's that idea of your deck reflecting you. So if you love goblins or you love elves or you love merfolk or tree folk or what have you, or you just like that flavor and feel of a tribal deck. And it's also a lot of fun, depending on the tribe, to be able to gather creatures of that tribe from throughout Magic's history. Because if you talk vampires, well, there's vampires in every set. Mm -hmm. And so you can get these unexpected synergies with them because Wizards does such a great job in making sure that they don't just call any old creature a vampire. There are certain flavors and characteristics and, yes, even mechanics beyond just boosting or or regenerating others of that tribe. But there are certain aspects to being a vampire that are fairly consistent throughout Magic's history. And so you can get these amazing, enjoyable synergies as well. So I think Tribal is probably one of the most popular, wouldn't you say, commander uh, uh archetypes of, of deck just overall oh yeah easily yeah it's it's not even close like if you were to if you're if you were to go to the most general like archetype of commander there's really i mean it's almost not fair because magic has supported tribes throughout its existence so it's almost not even fair to compare anything to it but tribes are just so inviting like there's it's not that it's necessarily super easy to build a tribal deck but they give you all the pieces right there you don't right. have to really go searching that hard and you just people are drawn to synergy Tribes have great synergy. <laughs> and it's just, no, I, I get why. And that's why I started. It was just, it was a fun deck to play. It didn't take a lot of effort to build. And it still ended up being one of the most fun times I've had with Commander. And so you built it just so that you could play Baron Sengir? How'd that work out for you? At the time, I didn't really know how fast the format was going to be. I was more idealistic than anything else. Listen, Baron Sanger is great, but man, that dude is fat. <laughs> he is so slow. <laughs> Baron Sanger Ugh. was actually, my first commander deck was vampires as well. No joke. And Baron Sanger was why I wanted to build that. And I guess technically you could say that Baron Sanger was my first commander, although he only lasted about a week because he's terrible. So he's bad. the worst. And when <laughs> Just so bad because he's so awesome. Wizards of the Coast, please, please, please give us another Baron Sangir. Magic yeah. Origins, oh yeah, I'm dreaming. But come on, make another legendary creature called Baron Sangir. Give him another Baron, uh, or, or call it Sangir, the Baron of, of, of the Homelands or something like that. Something. And give us a new legendary vampire, please, please. all in black, and have... Peter Ventner's illustrate it, please, for the love of everything. And because that illustration of Baron Sengir is so cool. I love and it. The I love it. The flavor is so cool, but the card is terrible. It's much so like bad. everything else in Homelands. Uh, he's too expensive <laughs> and he's just a trumped up Sengir vampire, really. Yeah. Uh, he can also regenerate target vampire, which is good, but not good enough. He's definitely not a win more. Price. Like, if he's being powerful in your deck, you're probably winning. I don't even I don't even Just have saying. him in my my casual commander mono black vampires deck anymore. He was just not worth How'd that conversation go? Bot. Did he cry a little bit? He answered to me in the end. He answered to me. 
You know, keep in mind, I'm a planeswalker, and he's just a legendary creature. Oh, keep in mind, the only reason Baron Sengir is in the homelands is because he was brought there by another planeswalker a long time ago <laughs> and just abandoned there. So mm, he's used mm. to doing the bidding of planeswalkers. Uh, wow, although, that's very yeah. mean. <laughs> yep, yep, really yep. Mean. So he had to go back in the binder. I've got binders full of barons, and... Uh, my commander that I replaced him with, and who I really think of as my first commander, mm. is Anowan, the Rune Sage. Oh, he was in my deck. Well, I needed mono my black because I had originally, you know, like like got the cards together for that Baron Sengir commander deck, and as soon as it became clear that wasn't going to work, I needed to stay in mono black, and so I turned to Anowan, the Rune Sage. Who, for those who are unfamiliar, he's two black and three colorless for a 4-3 legendary vampire shaman. Interestingly enough, he does not fly, but at the beginning of your upkeep, each player, not target opponent or anything, but each player sacrifices a non-vampire creature. He's and gross. that includes uh, you as well, because it doesn't say each opponent. So he kind of insists on you having a mostly vampire uh, tribal deck, but I really liked that sack effect, and I built the deck around discard and sack effects to emphasize that. And it was a, I, I sh it is, I still have it. It is a really neat mono black vampire tribal with Anna Wynn. And again, he's one of those commanders that I think most people would look at him and, and Sheldred the whispering one and think oh. Sheldred was the better. And, and she probably Sheldred's a she, right? Shieldred? Is she? I, it's, I mean, I just said she. But I think Shieldred's a she. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, no, might. Shieldred's totally a she. Yeah, yeah and she she is brutal. Yeah, she is. And, it, it, you know, probably is the strictly better mono black sack commander than Anowin, because then she also allows you to have non-vampires in your deck. But I do think that he's underrated. He makes a great starting out budget mono black vampire build for sure i think that's what i like about sure. vampires overall that deck is pretty budget like yeah as far as yeah. as far as most even just in, in tribal decks in general you know a lot of their cards are pretty pretty budget like it's it's nice it's just it's nice well if you're able to go mono colored your budget because all you you ideally only need swamps yeah I no mean, land base if you've got <laughs> If you've already got in your binders, in your collection, some cool lands that work with that deck, then great. The more the merrier. Throw them in. But if you don't, if you're starting out... It's still fine. Yeah, Just throw in the swamps, and, and that's really great. Yeah, especially like for Mono Black, which I, I think Mono Black is... Mono Black, Mono Green are two colors that are, are really well supported in Commander for not having anything else. I think mono red is really hard <laughs> for yeah. commander and people are drawn to mono red but if you're doing multiplayer you're you're going to have a hard time doing burn i mean it's definitely not a secret red aggro it's it's definitely not a secret that uh red it gets hit pretty hard for commander uh it's it's hard to find you know red commander staples in general or just mono red decks that can you know stand up to a lot of other strategies i know among the various commander groups i've had most people have red just because they happen to go with their blue and green commanders. Just saying. Like, yeah. that's just, you know, or their black and white commanders, you know. Um, no, I definitely, red is a hard time in commander, uh, which yeah. is unfortunate for red players. Ha, ha, ha. White, blue. <laughs> though, though, actually going uh, with Krenko, mob boss for mono red that's goblins, true. that is, that's called... If anybody knows what you're doing, if you're playing with anybody other than yeah. other new players, then you're going to have a hard time. No, we're talking about, yeah, the, he's the most competitive busted. mono red. He's absolutely oh, busted. He's busted. You're, you're right. Yeah, he's gross. Just needs a couple turns to get out of control. Exception to the rule. Yeah. Exception to the rule. <laughs> Exception that proves the rule. Yeah, yeah. You know, right. Krenko is, he's not fun to play against. It's not fun. How many decks have you built? Just not do you have currently built, but how many commander decks have you physically constructed over your magic career? How many commander decks do you think you physically constructed? Only three. No. So only few? Three. Here's here's all right. So I built I built Drana, which uh -huh. was just, you know, on a whim, and I thought that was cool. And then I built Kalia, 
which I thought was also cool, but I wasn't like really into it. And then I found Angus McKenzie, and this was a few years ago. Ah, and Angus McKenzie. Sorry, I had to say that right. Angus McKenzie. Um, Hi, laddie. He's, for, for those of you who don't know, or in other words, have enjoyed uh, Commander up to this point, uh, <laughs> Angus McKenzie is Bant, just white, blue, uh, green, for a 2-2 legend. He's from Legends. Uh, you pay Bant again, white, blue, green, and tap him. Uh, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn, activated only before combat damage step. Now, it doesn't take a lot of, you know, imagination or creativity to understand what I'm trying to do here. He's Turbo Fog on a stick, and ever since I found him years ago, uh, I've, I haven't stopped building that deck. It's just, it. I keep changing things, I keep putting more into it, and I like to, I'm the type of person that likes to put everything I can into one thing. That's just what I do, and I don't like to move on. I don't like to do other things. I've completely fallen in love with Angus McKenzie, and I don't. I have no idea what's going to get me to move on. I have no idea. But that's why I built so few. Once I got to him, it was just it was a wall. I saw no other reason, and because I have so many other cards that I want and decks to build, I just I didn't have the resources to like go deep into Commander like that and build like a ton of decks. That is a lot of fun, though. I think that one of the things that a lot of people who do build a lot of commander decks miss out on is focusing all of that energy into fine-tuning one deck to perfection. Because when you have 12 commander decks, this isn't going to be true of everyone. I'm sure we're going to get a lot of people posting, oh, no, you know, I, I, I devote all of that energy. But I do mm -hmm. think in general, if you've got 12 commander decks, you're always building something new. And you don't get to sit down and devote that mental energy. And heck, let's be honest, resources, you know, you're spending money on those cards, you're spending your trade resources f towards those cards and really refining that commander deck. And people who have fewer commander decks can oftentimes really just dive into this year, years and years long process of fine tuning. And I think that's really exciting especially when you've got a, a, a really powerful commander that you have a real strong attachment to and you get really good results with, to just spend that time constantly fine-tuning, constantly building on to that one deck is really exciting, really satisfying, absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally get the other way. Like, I have friends that have 10, 15 commander yeah. decks. I get yeah. the appeal, totally get it. And I have nothing against that whatsoever. I just happen to, like love Angus McKenzie and have no reason personally to build anything else. <laughs> because yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Just, yeah, but I, I I totally get the other way. Some people just, they want a bunch of options and that's awesome. Like there's not, there's no right or wrong, uh, which is another reason why Commander's great. But yeah, uh, yeah, I very few decks, I'm sure compared to you or compared to even the average Commander player. Can't even let's, imagine. How many do you let's have? Let's see. All right. Well, uh, now, now, what I have currently is different. I want to see if I can actually, and I didn't prepare any notes on this like I should have, but just off the top of my head, if I can remember completed commander decks that I've built. Oh, wow. Uh, Cranko Mob Boss. I think that's still assembled. You're one of them. I uh, haven't played that in a while. Uh, Send Triplets. Uh, mm. Absolutely still assembled. And that one I'm doing some fine tuning on. Um Sapling of Kulfinar, obviously, because I did a video on that. Uh, right. Tesa, Orzov Cyan, because I did a video on that. The Slivers with the uh, uh, Sliver Overlord <laughs> as Commander, absolutely, is one. Uh, what else have I done? Um, uh, Sig River Guide I built specifically for the channel. So that's those, those are all still constructed. Anowin is in a few pieces, I think. I need to take a look at that deck because I pulled a lot of you know, key black cards that I only had right. one copy uh, uh, from. I think they largely went into my send triplets deck. Uh, and let's see, who else? Priorities. So this, yes. Uh, uh, have definitely done an attempt at the original Niv-Mizzet, which I'm still... Ooh. I never completed it and sat down to play with it because there's a lot of expensive cards you need for yep. a, a real good Niv-Mizzet deck, I feel. And I haven't bothered to, to, to devote the resources to obtaining them all. But that's one I, I definitely have to finish. Uh, who else? I, I, I did an Adden Oaken Shield was my choice for the Viable Legends legend when I looked wow. at all of them. Uh, but Old hard. School. 
Adon, Adon Oakenshield is, he's three, so that, hey, maybe, you know, tiny leaders, I don't know. But one green, one red, and one black, which is neat as well. Yeah. And he's a one-two legend from the original Legends, and it's one green, one red, one black, and tap to select a creature from your graveyard, and unfortunately it goes into your hand and not the battlefield, which would be much better if it gross. went to the battlefield. Gross. Yeah, that would be gross. <laughs> Gross. But I, I always, I always wanted to have a, and then of course I have, uh, because I, I have a Nicol Bolas original Legends commander deck because I always want to have one of the original Elder Dragons at hand. That's fair. And if you have never sat down with four other people and played Elder Dragon from Legends against Elder Dragon from Legends, where all five Elder Dragons are represented, that'd be and cool. You, that is. That is one of the most fun experiences you will have. So, like, commander players who are fanatics and have very active play groups and might be feeling a little bit of ennui or what to do next, I cannot recommend enough. You get four reliable commander players together and you say, okay, we all are going to be a different <coughs> legend from legends and build that deck. And we're going to sit down with Chromium and Nicol Bolas and, and all of them to have uh, a original Elder Dragon commander game that's pretty that cool. is fun it is really fun because you're all limited in the same way with them and trying to figure out which one you're going to do and negotiating it and so I, I always wanted to have that handy and built and i've got that for nickel bolas but so i guess this is when i actually say them out loud it feels like more than mm. it actually has been and then my wife uh only built and is tuning uh, a tristani tokens deck which is pretty powerful. I can see that, yeah. Because you get the... Uh, I mean, Tristani's pretty great. <laughs> Tristani's great, but then you do Commander with five players, and you're doing life gain tokens. People largely leave you alone, and then you drop that Feldegar Sovereign. and uh, Game over. Game over. <laughs> Feldegar and Sovereign. Yeah, uh, and she's just like, I win, you know. The card's gross. Because I'm at 80 life, and nobody can swing into me because I've got a billion tokens. So unfair. Yep. Uh, that's, yeah, we, we used to have somebody, uh, who played a life gain deck and just turn one Sarah Ascendant every game without fail. Every game. Sure. What? There's one, <laughs> but whatever. It's, I've had that bad works. experiences with life gain decks. Um, <laughs> uh, but that's one of the reasons I chose Angus McKenzie because he doesn't care about how much life you have. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Out of all those commanders, is Angus McKenzie your number one favorite commander? By far, I would yeah. say absolutely. If I had the resources to build, uh, or the time, I guess, to build another commander deck, it would probably be Joyra at this point. After so many years of seeing commander, I don't think I've ever seen someone have more fun than one of my friends who has a Joyra of the Gitu deck. Yeah. Uh, for for those of you, wait, I, I need to I need to get the wording right because Joy is hilarious. She's great, and what's really neat is unless there's been a spike in price that I'm not aware of, she's super budget. Yeah, my, uh, she herself. was printed in Modern Masters, and again. even when she was, I mean, she was always yeah, no, just she a was, couple yeah. of bucks. I mean, her and foil for commander, like... and she allows you to get because of her ability. Uh, she allows you to stack that deck full of powerful stupid cards, stupid, stupid. but also usually relatively cheap what we might yeah. call timmy cards that you know she suddenly makes super heavy hitters uh much more viable and everything because they'll just be coming into play like crazy yeah the um the the the, the first joy deckless i saw for the record she, she uh one colorless uh one blue one red two two legendary human wizard you could pay two colorless and exile a non-land card from your hand Put four time counters on the exiled card. If it doesn't have suspend, it gains suspend. So you just you play Joyra and then Blightsteel Colossus, Tide Spout Tyrant, right. Ulamog, Kozilek. Like the deck was full of just the biggest creatures on the planet. And you never have to worry because one, Joyra is super cheap to play. Right. So you get her out early. And two, she's your commander. So you don't have to worry about your deck being based around something that's in your deck. It's right, right. there. Right. She's she's hilarious. She's and when so you fun. Stack, when you stack the other 99, as they say, just full of those, just that list goes on and on. Yep. And it doesn't matter. You bring her out, and maybe you've got some equipment in there to protect her, give her some hex proof or indestructibility or something, uh, uh, or you, you have some counter spells because you've got the blue, what have you, and you just start this steamrolling process of 
a lot. I've lost to many a Joyra. <laughs> and she's, you start this. She's it's gross. Just like, <laughs> after a while, it doesn't even matter if they've removed her because you've just got these creatures hitting the battlefield. Exactly. Hitting the battlefield. Hitting the battlefield. And then usually you can bring her back in. Absolutely great, I yeah. think, for a first commander too. Yeah, she's wonderful. I, I, I wish I wish I had knew about her when Commander really got going. I completely forgot. I didn't think about her at all. But man, I wish I did. Joyra's just she's like the definition of like fun in Commander for that kind of game. It's just it's yeah. wonderful. So she's but definitely Angus. He's exactly what I want out of a commander. Exactly. What what about wait, what is your what's your favorite deck that you have? So I have this. You this look so conflict. upset. I even asked you. Well, I have a conflict, which is that <laughs> my my favorite commander uh, and my favorite deck is without a doubt my Tesa Orzov Scion deck. Uh, but it isn't the deck I would keep if I only had to keep one deck. Ooh. Is the thing because if I only if you said to me, okay, you are going to have to for financial reasons or life reasons get rid of all but one of your commander decks, and you will only get to play one commander, you'll still get to play commander, but it's just with one deck, I would actually choose to keep my Sapling of Kulfinar deck. Because the play experience of Sapling, which has got just such a nice combination of aggro and removal and the type of fine-tuning that I could do to green and black over the years that we're talking about, is so much more immense. Like with Tesa, it's kind of written. And it's yeah. done. There's one clear strategy... And it's a combo deck. You're looking to combo off at whatever intensity you choose for the deck. But it's also kind of done. And a new card might come out where it's like, oh, that could be interesting. I can That's a strictly better this, or that'll swap this underperforming card out. And that's fine, but it's very minor in terms of those changes. And games kind of go the same. You're going to do the same thing each game. Whereas with Sapling, all the tree folk in that deck, all the creatures on the ground in that deck you're going to have different game experiences. When I sit down to play Sapling, it goes different every single time. And I can make changes to that deck just as simple as, as sliding in or sliding out my World Slayer, which will just completely change how that... Gosh! you know. And I don't keep World Slayer in my Sapling deck regularly, but every <laughs> now and then I slide in that World Slayer because she's indestructible. And it's great. And I'll just... And maybe even a few uh, uh, cards for getting that equipment tutoring for that equipment you know i've got black and green so tutors galore and the play experience is so different every time and so successfully enjoyable that if i had to keep one deck for the rest of my life it would be the sapling deck but my favorite deck and my favorite commander just out of everything is currently tasa even but, as even yeah. as an opponent i've i've played against tasas before tasas are all over the place, right? Like, yeah, right. And, and like you said, there's a roadmap already. Sapling, it's almost like you're doing a service to Commander in general. I know a lot of players who've never even seen a Sapling deck or even know the, what yeah. the card is. So the fact that it's, you know, rogue, more rogue than, you know, Tesa, I think is is nice for everyone. Yeah. Uh, just in general, because it's always nice seeing new cards. So what Commander's about. It's seeing stuff you never even knew existed. Yeah. So yeah. No, that's yeah. a good, I, I get why you made that decision. Yeah, um, I like uh, so that. I, I guess then I'm going to say my number one favorite commander. If, well, I, I guess my favorite commander is Tasa, but my favorite commander deck is Sapling. That's, that's a fair. huge contradiction, uh, but that's what I'd well, say. It's like my favorite commander, like just the commander. It's like Tasa is so badass and so cool and, and does such a unique thing. And Okay, she's my favorite commander, but my favorite commander deck is is sapling i could see that i know um one of my friends has a kalia of the vast deck loves kalia yeah because of kalia also has a horde of notions deck loves that because of the deck thinks it's hilarious and that's yeah. i think if you asked him he would give a similar answer kalia would be his favorite commander horde of notions would be his favorite deck uh so i definitely i i, th I think that makes that makes a lot of sense that's nice about commanders that can that's okay like yeah 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 so we've had some interesting changes to commander rules recently. This happened how long ago was it now? A couple of weeks back. Uh, like I mean, like a month now, right? No, has it been the month? It's wow. Has it? I mean, by by the time this comes out, maybe. Well, this with close <laughs> fingers crossed. Fingers this crossed. will be coming out within seven days of us recording. Oh, not it. not a month. Not a month. You're right. A few yeah. weeks. I thought a few more weeks. time had passed. No, it's 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 recent changes yep, and. Yep. Uh, 
they are to what we call the tuck rule, largely. Yeah, it's the, it's the process of shuffling a creature that's on the battlefield into the owner's library, right. which is a mechanic that's been around for a long time. It's This isn't some new thing that you know players are finding out for the first time. But if you haven't seen the rule change, which has been everywhere, so if, if you haven't seen it, uh, now when your commander is tucked, you can put it in the command zone if you want, instead of it being tucked, uh, which is basically the same as the current exile and graveyard rule. Right. Uh, if, if you want to compare that. And there's been a lot of controversy about it. Uh, a, more arguments than I've seen about anything commander related in a while. Uh, and when it was announced, um, they gave four reasons why this happened. And it's been talked to death a lot of other places. I, I, I specifically want to say the Command Zone podcast did a great overview of the rule. They did. And I, I definitely want to link that uh, in the description. But just I think really quickly we should go over it because I've been asked a million times. Sure. So let me let me actually start with this for somebody listening that may not be familiar with the Tuck rule, uh, might be new to Commander. Why is it that if I Doomblade your Commander, you can choose to have it go to the Command Zone. If I Path to Exile your Commander, you can choose to have it go to the Command Zone instead of Exile. But if I use a card that says Target Creature gets shuffled in, to opponent's library or target creature gets placed at the bottom of that player's library, some spell that is going to put that creature back in your library, why was this not originally going to the command zone? Was there a mechanical reason for this? Were we was this considered not changing zones? There were I I remember originally when I heard the original arguments, there were a ton of arguments about that very issue. Uh, I don't I don't know where it started and I don't know why it was left out originally. I because actually it's don't. not changing it's not changing zones. It's not correct. No, I right. don't think and so. That's, and so the rule was written that when your commander is going to change zones from the battlefield, either to the graveyard, which is another zone, or exile, which mm-hmm. is these days a zone, didn't used to be, but mm. now oh, that's another topic. Uh, uh, but now it's a zone. Uh, so the rule was that if the commander changes zones, you can choose to redirect it yeah, right. to the command yeah. zone. And so they said, well, wait a minute. If it's being shuffled into your library, I believe that this is not uh, technically a change of zone. And so that's why it was allowed to happen. Yeah, that that makes sense. Uh, that definitely. I mean, one of their arguments was, or one of the four reasons they did this was a rules argument based on consistency among leaving the battlefield in mm-hmm. general, going anywhere but your hand. Right. Uh, because they said that there was no that uh, going into your deck, going to the graveyard, and going to exile were fundamentally the same thing for that rule, or like for they they, they said this should be treated similarly. In reference to commanders leaving the zone, going to another zone, I, I think it's outrageously vague, and I don't get it that much. But yeah. um, I guess I get why their rules. They just should have done it from the beginning, is what it should have been. Because as someone who, like, I play commander, but I'm not like super into, you know, when it was a zone or when it's not a zone, you know, all that stuff. I don't, I don't get that at all. Um, but they, I guess they came to terms, at least reading the article, that going from the battlefield to the deck is a zone change. And once they decided that was a thing, they're like, well, we might as well treat it like every other zone change. Right. I just, I just want to know why that changed and why right now. They changed it, in my opinion, because they wanted it to be easier for players to maintain control of their commander. And that since the idea of commander is so wrapped up in the commander that you've chosen and so many decks rely on that commander to function, that a lot of players were not able to compensate when their commander was tucked. And so, or, or it was just difficult. Or it was just difficult. Like now I have to use my demonic tutor to go find my commander. And I wanted to use that demonic tutor to find the win con that interacts with my commander. And so this is one of those changes where it's done to what we call nerf 
a part of the game that is upsetting people, that it's difficult. Right. It's difficult to deal with. In some cases, some decks have no ability to deal with it. But worse, what was said is that some colors can't tuck at all. And since tuck was not something like, for example, I believe in red and black and green, right? Is it? It's red yeah, and black yeah. and green. Yeah, yeah. Blue and white you, are the ones with the... Blue and white are the only ones with tuck abilities. Except for the best so, tuck ability in magic, which is in red. Right. Uh, Just saying. Uh, Chaos right. War. Right, chaos. Just work. saying, whatever, no right. big deal. Um, besides that, there's no tuck abilities in red, green, and black, and so there was also this. Well, you're at a great disadvantage because if you're playing white or blue or blue and white, then you can tuck your opponent's commander, and it's causing people to splash white for tuck effects, splash blue for tuck effects. It's constricting the choice and the diversity of commanders. These were all the uh, reasons oh, yeah, yeah, given. No, yeah. Uh, do you agree with that? Do you think this is good for the game? I I disagree 100 billion percent uh, with this move. First, because I mean, first, like I should say, first, I have bullet points. Uh, when it comes to tuck effects, it's every color in Magic has a personality. It has a style. It does what it does. Tuck effects are a white and blue mechanic because they're white and blue, and that's what white and blue does. Just because green, black, and mostly red don't have access to it doesn't make it fundamentally unfair. One. And two, I can't... I don't think I've ever found one person in the history of Magic who would pick a commander based on tuck effects. Like, right. who's going to splash white? Who's going to pick a whole different commander? Or who's going to splash, splash white? Who, yeah, yeah, who's going to splash it just for spell crumple? A whole new right. commander just for that one... No one. No one's going right. to do that. That's completely unrealistic. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to me. But what, what what gets me more upset than that is they say, you know, commander is about your commander. We don't want people to lose access for the whole game to their commander. There are so many ways to get a card from your library to your hand. One. And two, you draw cards. It's Magic the Gathering. It's what you do. You don't get to decide where all your cards are all the time. That's not the point. Like, if right. randomness wasn't part of Magic, it wouldn't even be Magic. Right. Like, it's... And ah. it just... I, I couldn't agree with you more on this. Like, a uh, hundred... What did you say? A hundred billion percent? Whatever yep. you said, that's... I'm... I'm I, I, I have complete and utter agreement with you on this issue and i feel that this is a, a small minority of players or a sentiment even that you're hearing about that is not reflective of the larger player base and that it's just in response to oh that makes it really hard for me that that they tucked my commander and it's like well that's what's good about this game is a challenge and so you do need to find a way to compensate. Maybe you can't build a commander deck where if you can't get your commander to stay in play, then the deck doesn't function. Maybe you need to have backup strategies. Maybe that's part of it. Maybe you need to ask those questions of what happens if I don't get my commander into play. Maybe if you do build a deck that relies entirely on your commander, then that's the price you pay, is that you're running a risk. And the riskier the road, the greater that, that triumph at the end. But that means that there is risk involved. And when you're eliminating that, when you're putting a kind of, this is like a, say, it's like, well, you know, Wedge, you know what I don't like about bowling? Is I go and it goes in the gutter. And, and then I don't even get a single pin knocked down. Can we just put like a bumper? And now I still need skill to make a strike, but then always at least one pin falls down <coughs> if we've got those bumpers. And, and this is what, I feel that we're leading into with this. Well, now, and what about the way that this kills the diversity that blue and white had access to those tuck effects? Colors should be able to mostly, with rare exception, do unique defining things. That too yeah. is magic. And when you start to say, well, wait a minute, there's no tuck effects in other colors. It's like, well, there shouldn't be. Uh, you know what? Uh, Wedge, why don't we go over tutoring, wouldn't you say, is not is one of the most powerful things in Commander as well, to be able to bypass the fact that you have 100 cards, making it very, very hard to determine 
any type of consistency in your deck. Well, if I've got a tutor, it's like I've got two cards of the same name in that Highlander and that uh, uh, Commander deck. And so I've got a great advantage. Tutors are a huge advantage. Uh, what are some really good red tutors, Wedge? What are some really good red tutors? Um, hmm, hmm. Oh wait, red really doesn't. Uh, there's the hundred dollar one. There's there's the hundred dollar imperial recruiter and um nothing else. And so you know what? If you're in red, you don't have access to tutors. Because that's the, the point, though. Like that's expected. Is the proper response a? Just deal with it. Red does other things. B. Let's take away tutors from all the other colors. Or C. <laughs> Or C, let's create in the next set a whole bunch of one red and one red, one colorless, and one red and X tutors. I mean, the, the, the answer is A. Red doesn't tutor. That's not what red does. It's not. Leave it. And if we start saying, well, here's a little bit of tutoring in red. Here's a little bit more tutoring in red. We'll just, ooh, how about this wedge? Let's just print red tutor cards in Commander Precon products so they're never a part of Standard or Modern, but Commander players have access to them. Ugh. And then the colors wash and delude away, and it becomes less and less defined by what it can and cannot do, and it's all equal footing. It, it definitely feels like... And I, I say it's going to sound ridiculous, but it feels like a bunch of kids got upset. A bunch mm -hmm. of kids got upset because their commanders went away and they cried about it. And someone from on high didn't think at all and just decided to make this change. And the real reason that I think that it was just made quickly out of with no complex thought at all was one of the reasons just killed me. It was about tutors. They, they, they said they didn't want to support the, you know, excess use of tutors in, in Commander, there is, this is a 100 card singleton format. There is nothing you can do to make people use less tutors. Are you kidding yeah. me? That's, that makes zero sense. And it is impossible to justify that. It is absolutely ridiculous. If you like, and this, this leads down the slippery slope, right? You talk about now the tuck rule is gone. Well, what if I play against a bunch of red decks that have fireball and blasphemous act? I don't. I don't think you should be able to deal that much damage with a burn spell because you just rem right. or give 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 white or blue an X damage burn spell. Like, there's what's gonna stop it at the tuck roll? What's gonna? What about unsummons? Oh, right. but you know, like it's just there's they're setting a precedent that lets them willy nilly remove mechanics as they see fit, yeah. and that drives me beyond nuts because you're taking a format that's been relatively stable. And just poking it a little bit just changes the whole thing. Because now players can look at it and be like, well, what are they going to change next? This this sucks. Right. Like, you've just, you've effectively nerfed white and blue. You've taken away something that they had that now they don't have, replaced it with nothing. And it, it just, it kills me. You're taking away something fundamental to colors. What are you doing? Commander was not hitting a critical point because of tuck rules. Not Commander was not breaking apart at the seams. Commander was not experiencing this thing where every day on Reddit you or, or on the message boards or on the official forums. No, wait, nobody uses the official forums on Reddit or, or the message boards. Shots uh, fired. People are, wah, wah. Oh, come on. Population six on the officials. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, on, on Reddit every day there wasn't a thing call it saying Commander game not working because of tuck effects. We all sat down to play Commander and it just didn't didn't work anymore because of these tuck effects. Nobody was saying this. Nobody was having a problem. What was happening was people would make some some attempt at a bonkers, crazy, broken deck, and there and it relies on their commander, and their commander gets tucked, and and then that person would get upset about that. And it was very much the minority. I didn't even see. I mean, I spend so much time scouring all of those different Same. sources. And I didn't even see much in the way of complaints. I think this is the sort of thing where Wizards did a focus group with target demos, you know, which never gets you accurate reflection anyway. No. Uh, and, and they said, well, it sounds like a huge majority of players have an issue with the tuck effects. The, and the, the disconnect it was, was not unreal. breaking the game. This has the been going on since, it, since before Commander was called Commander. The tuck rule was going on since before Commander was called commander and the format did nothing but explode and grow and it's been doing nothing but exploding and growing and people have been saying nothing but that they love it they're obsessed with it 
why are you gonna muddle that mixture? You're you're fixing something that isn't broken. Right. And it's it's I just why I I cannot wrap my head around it being any other reason than there were like two people that were just upset and they right. whined and they had they either had influence or power somewhere and they're like you yeah, need to get rid of, these, of this right now. It's like, gonna be one. It's one of these focus groups where they're looking at 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 you know, they're looking at the population cockeyed and they're saying, well, we got this group together and we asked them some questions and then we're assuming that that represents everybody and especially in magic it does not. And Ugh. that's my, I mean, who knows where, where this came from. It came out of nowhere too. That, like, listen, we already talked about our feelings on the banning of treasure crews, oh, but that man. didn't come out of nowhere. We no. knew that was on the radar. We knew why they were likely going to ban it. We, we knew it. It wasn't a surprise. This tuck came out of nowhere. It was insane. Yeah. There was and no precedent so, for it. Like before. No, I remember looking around afterwards, like, did I miss Something I talked to, you know, staple members of the community that I knew. I've talked to a lot of people. I've played with countless commander players. Like, not one person has ever once mentioned to me that Tuck is broken. No, it's a mechanic in Magic. Like, it's like any other mechanic. Uh I don't know. It's just. I mean, I mean we're, we're going to beat a dead horse at this point, but it was. Uh, are those are those uh, counter spell? Or, I'm sorry. Are those uh, spells that Tuck my commander? Do they all say cannot be countered? Oh, oh! You mean I, I could have an answer for it? So you attempt to tuck my commander, and I counter that spell. Oh, wait! But the problem was reliance on 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 white and blue. Could I not do something clever like maybe Doomblade my own commander and then send it back to the command zone, which is where I would want it to go? Or use Can one I of the not... ninety-five tutors you have because you're in black. Right. Oh. Or green. Or, or green. Yeah. Uh, green tutor? Well, wait a minute. For a creature? Oh, wait. That's what green tutors for best are creatures. Uh, it's it's just an absolute betrayal of color identity. Yeah. Absolute betrayal. It like like What it, it, about it, it, stuff like dark steel mutation where now you can cast that on a commander and the commander is enchanted and it's just a 0-1 dark steel creature? with no abilities. Hmm. Uh, shouldn't I be able, when you cast en an enchantment on my commander, don't you think maybe I should choose to redirect my commander to the command zone instead of letting that enchantment resolve? I mean, it's, that's no no fun. Fun. it's no Wedge, fun. It's no fun to have it turn into a beetle and I can't even block and have it killed because it's indestructible. I would have to have disenchant, which is largely in white. My red deck can't, red can't disenchant things. Uh, uh, black has trouble with enchantments, <laughs> You're, and I can't destroy it. <laughs> this is not fun. <clears throat> the The moral of the story is when you pick a commander, when you're playing this extremely diverse format, you go in strengths and weaknesses. Everything has strengths and weaknesses. If you pick a deck that's completely 100% based on your commander, you should have the knowledge that you need to protect it, and your deck should reflect that. Right. And you should be punished if you can't, because that's the point. Like it's you're you're going against the reason. It's like it's giving floaties to people who have been swimming their whole lives. <laughs> like, right. And I, I also just, don't uh, like the way it's 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 directly rewriting how the rules of the game go to suit the situation, and it's saying, well, now it doesn't get shuffled into the library, even though that is what it has done and what is the logical reaction yep. to that effect. It's this one card I'm trying to think of. Um, okay, uh, ablation mm -hmm. just printed, just reprinted in Commander 2014. I just wanted to make sure that I got this right. Owner of target non-land permanent shuffles it into their library, then draws two cards. Just printed in right. Commander 2014. This just happened. There are people that go out of their way to find cards like this who right. need them for decks because that's one of the advantages. To, I just it's. It just blows my mind that they can take a card that's been so good for so long. Oblation's a staple in white commander right. decks. It's everywhere. Just like spell now crumple and blue. Worthless. Now it's it's, now gar it's, it's garbage. Worthless. It's garbage. And it's it I it, it, it like it breaks my heart that they're the, the idea of commander is making cards great that might not have been great before, or finding value in things that didn't have value. You just did the exact opposite. You just you re killed cards. Right. I so hate I, it. 
I do too, and I, I, I really strongly agree with that. But you bring up a really good point that I, I, I'd like to touch on, which is this idea that Commander is going back through this enormous catalog of Magic cards, uh, uh, over 20 years worth of Magic the Gathering cards, and finding cards that interact with each other, finding cards with great synergies, or that just suddenly have a great power in a five-player, multiplayer game that, that's going on long. And yet, there's also this idea of instead of looking for cards that have been printed, that are now great in Commander, there's also Wizards of the Coast creating unique cards just for Commander, and when they sit down to make this card for the Commander pre-constructed deck, they don't have to worry about what it's going to do in Standard because it's not standard legal. It's just being made for the Commander Precon decks. They don't have to worry about it going into Modern because it's just being made for the Commander Precon decks. And so all they have to ask themselves is the question, how do we make a fun, great, powerful, uh, whatever card for Commander? And that's very different because then when I see that card, I'm like, I don't have to make the determination, will this be good in Commander? Because they already approached it from that angle. Let's make a card that's good for Commander. What is the difference between great in Commander and made and designed exclusively to be great in Commander? Is this a good or bad thing? For um, reasons other than, than finance. Yeah. Never mind, let's, let's never mind finance. We'll touch for that a minute. in a is second. It good, is it good that Wizards of the Coast is making cards exclusively with Commander in mind? I think originally it kind of goes against what Commander was to begin with, which was a really cool way of playing cards that might not have been good before. It kind of like attacks the spirit of Commander, at least to me when I started. I don't always dislike cards that they print for Commander, but there's a huge difference between cards that are great in Commander and cards that are made for it. Um, I thought a lot about it, and just looking at Angus McKenzie, there's a great card that we'll see no play ever in anything else in the history of ever, is a card called Teferi's Moat, which was right. originally printed in Invasion. It was reprinted in Time Spiral. It's just it's three colorless, one white, one blue for an enchantment. When it comes into play, you choose a color, and creatures of the chosen color without flying can attack you. That's a great card, and yeah. that's great for Commander, and all you'd have to do to find that is just you know search on Gatherer for a little bit or know somebody with some older cards. I, that's how I like finding cards. I like doing that, and I like making cards relevant that weren't relevant before. That's cool. I think that when you talk about Wizards reprinting cards specifically for Commander, there are two camps, at least to me. There's the ones where they take up spots and sets that I don't like. Like, uh, you know, random mythics that I don't want to draw that are good literally nowhere else. Right. That drives me nuts. Like Shaman of Forgotten Ways is the example right. I wanted to use. I hate that. That card is bad everywhere. But it has biorhythm on it for eleven mana. You really think that was designed for limited? Please, right. like that's that's specifically for commander. So I don't like that. I think, I guess it's tough because emotionally, I want to say that I don't like that they make commander specific cards because they take the effort out of it, and like they take almost the fun out of searching for cards. But at the same time, I really like what they do to conspiracy. So yeah. I don't know. It's 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 rough for me. I'm in the middle. Let me ask you a question. Here's a quiz, actually, for those of you listening at home, and I'm going to quiz Wedge on this. And as I quiz Wedge on this, I want you folks listening at home to see if you can answer the question. You're going to embarrass how me. Many, how many cards do you need in a commander deck? How many cards do you need in a commander deck total? What's the rule on number of cards in a commander deck? Is this a trick question? It's not a trick question. Well, okay, it is, but what, what, what's... See, well, how you're, many cards... you're trying to trap me. <laughs> Stop. How many cards do you need for a commander deck? A hundred. Actually, actually, thanks to these pre-constructed commander products, it's 99 cards mm -hmm. that are needed because thanks to Command Tower, which is a land... Right. ...that oh, comes into play... Embarrassing me. ...that comes into play untapped with no drawback, no penalty, and costs one to two dollars financially. This card creates one mana of any color 
that your that's in your commander's color identity, which means it it essentially this is a land card wedge that might as well say land, play it, no drawback, tap to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. And they made it for commander, but only playing commander. There is no reason. There is not one deck you can ever show to me that should not run command tower. There is not one deck ever made, it's ever true. conceived of that you would say, here's a command tower to put in it, and they would say, oh, that actually, there's no place for that, because there's no disadvantage. It's adding one mana of any color. Your commander doesn't have to be in play. Your com you don't need to, it doesn't come to play. Ten nothing like that. It's one mana of any color. No questions, no conditions asked. It costs a buck or two. And every single commander deck you will ever make should run one copy of that, and now you only have 99 cards to think up. But here's the thing, they're making more and more cards like this. Let's talk about Champion's Helm. Let's oh. talk about Homeward Path. Let's talk about more and more cards that maybe aren't as must-have as Command Tower, but are damn close. And so then it gets to a point where, well, actually, when you look at all the made just for commander cards that are so amazing and that are such must haves that unless they cost a hundred dollars and that's the reason why you're not running it, but they keep reprinting them. And it's just like, well, OK, I guess I should also have a champion's helm because that pretty much is made to protect my commander. And maybe there are a few decks that don't run champion's helm, but a vast majority of them should always be running champion's helm. And there's a big difference, though, between the fact that they created Champion's Helm just for Commander and, like, let's say, Darksteel Plate. Lightning which, Greaves. Lightning Greaves, you know? And and what you're doing is, is when you are creating a card to be great in Commander, you are eliminating a slot, as long as it's a universal card. And if it's a color card, then you are eliminating a slot in that color. And so it's this amazing white card, and now every white deck should run it. It's an amazing green card. Every, you know, we just actually talking about the tuck rules. If you're running green, is there a reason you should not be running Song of the Dryads, which you enchant on their commander and turn it into a tree? You know? Yeah, I... And, and there's no reason. It's two mana. It's better than removal. It's better than anything in green that you should... And green has trouble with removal. And this is their thought problem. You know, there's not a lot of removal... In green and, and, and this, why don't we make a doom blade cost? What what would a green doom blade look like? They asked themselves and they said, well, we would never, ever make Song of the Dryads for standard, but put it in the precon. And that also gives people a reason to buy it. So now in my tree folk deck, I've got that Song of the Dryads and in any future green deck I make, whether it's mono green or multicolored with green, I should have that Song of the Dryads. And that's taking away my deck building. That is putting me on a path. And what happens when there are 10 cards that no matter what, 10, only 10 cards that no matter what you should have in your deck no matter what, and they're a dollar each. Well, now it's 90 card commander. 80 card, and, and everybody you sit down against has those 10 cards. That's more dangerous than Tuck to this format, in my opinion. That is much more dangerous than Tuck to this format. I would agree. It's definitely it's definitely forced. Uh, you bring up you bring up a great point, which I think connects really well with why um, I specifically point out something like conspiracy, because I don't think they forced as bad. Like I don't think they forced much there uh, as they did. You know, with something like uh, the song that you were talking about, or you know, Champion Sound. That's you're right. I mean, Commander supplemental or Commander specific products. They're they're. It actually goes back to what I originally said. It goes against the spirit of Commander, which is playing with what you have and making it good in Commander instead of having it just given to you on a platter, I guess. I mean, like, you have, I mean, you obviously have cards like Lightning Greaves or, you know, Swords of Plowshares and White. They're always going to be cards that people just have to play, but they're already in Magic. Like, they're already in they're already Magic. There. And I've asked this question before, and I'll ask it now officially, which is if. It's not something that you would print in the in what we might call the real game of magic standard to go into modern sense. constructed. If it's not something that you would really print, then why are you printing it? Like like 
why is it that you need to create a separate product where only this goes only for that format? What, are we going to start making some pre-constructed modern decks that have cards that we say are modern legal but not standard legal and not legacy legal? I mean, this is the way cards should be coming it. into this game. Well, of course, because they'll buy it. But that's what the sucks, idea yeah. of pre-constructed decks with reprints are for. Uh, uh, the way cards should be coming into this system <coughs> is through what was previously the core sets and we'll, there's only one more core set coming so through the the block sets and if it if you if you have reasons that you would never print this in block then maybe that's not a magic card maybe command tower isn't a magic card yeah i mean you know you're right there there are no questions magic's supposed to be full of questions you're right. No, I mean, that's right. Again, it goes back to the spirit of commander is making decisions. Command tower is not a decision. Right. And and the problem is, is that while command tower is the most blatant offender, I could name off a lot more besides champion's helm and the homeward path and, and cards like that that would go in any deck. Uh, and that this is going to keep happening because we're going to have a commander precon product every single year. And my goodness, when, there's such a big difference between there's a couple original cards in that Commander deck versus, I mean, how many did we have last year overall? Something like, I don't have the exact number in front of me, but 56, 76 new cards. That's a huge yeah, amount. A lot. A lot. <laughs> and that's reprint Damnation instead. <laughs> You know, like, like, how about you make that black commander deck have Damnation, and that red commander deck have Imperial Recruiter, and that white commander deck, and on and on and on and on. And how about that? Because that'll get just as many butts in the seats buying the, the, the decks. True. You don't have to have 78 new original for commander only outrageous cards. Just reprint some cards, for goodness sake. I mean, I guess just... I mean, it kind of goes back to the disconnect between... The game and the... P I mean, eventually people are going to notice that it's becoming more cookie cutter. But by the time that happens, right. it'll be too late. Right. So... What are you going to do? Ban 300 cards at that point? Yeah, it's... I mean, they would never... Yeah, that's yeah. that's just really depressing. You're right. That, right. That sucks. And that's my worry. That's my worry for this format. Is not the Tuck changes, not what Tuck was doing. Uh, my worry is, is where we're going to be with Commander after the next five years worth of five brand new commander decks that contain an enormous percentage of made just to be great in commander cards because they're making a fortune oh, off yeah. of that product yeah and, it, never and stop. they're gonna no they've they've officially said that yeah. there will be a commander every year on product every year just like there will be a special set like conspiracy or modern masters or something else there's going to be that not quite in the block structure set because it's selling and they're going to keep doing like well let's do something special in this and i, I again muddling the mixture i i fear i really do fear that yeah it's i mean again i just want to like i just want to reiterate commander specific products like the ones that come every like november uh your your argument your argument is mainly against those right because i thought conspiracy was great like, oh, I as, thought conspiracy as it, like, in a was vacuum. great. My my argument is against uh, 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 such a large number right. of cards that are made to be great only in Commander that were not being printed in the regular block. Now, when they printed Scavenging Ooze just for Commander and then very shortly afterwards brought it into the core set, which put it in Standard and then also put it in Modern, I was thrilled with that. Oh, yeah, that was a great idea. But they're not going to do that. You're not going to see, you know, so many of these cards appear in the block sets. Maybe they'll do it occasionally. Sure. But I, you know, and other formats as well. Look at what cards like, I mean, how many of these commander-only cards take their place in Legacy? True, True name, name nemesis. nemesis. Flusterstorm is Fluster all over Flusterstorm. Man, so w at what point is legacy? Our legacy decks going to be fifty percent commander only precon madness products? You know, I don't know. No, I, I was surprised when they announced it be every year. I, yeah. I did think that was that was a big. W I remember what I assumed is when the commander's arsenal came out, that was like a big hoorah, and they were going to like lay off for a little while. Because I remember right. when the arsenal was announced, it was this gigantic, crazy product, right? 
Um, Commander's Arsenal was brilliant, except for the fact they didn't print it any eight, of it. Classic Wizards of the Coast style. Right. Classic. So let's let's think about, for those who might not be familiar, let's think about what Commander's Arsenal was instead. Commander's Arsenal was not a deck. Commander's Arsenal was intended as a selection of cards that have already been printed that Commander players <coughs> either need a reprint of in that they're very hard to come by or that have never been foil because uh, uh, commander players like mm -hmm. legacy players like to foil out their decks uh, or that haven't been printed in a black border. And this was brilliant. This was Wizards of the Coast sitting down and saying, what are some artifacts that commander players could use a reprint of in foil? What are some green cards, red cards? And they put together 100, but it was not a deck cards it was your utility your arsenal and they were all foiled out they were terrible foiling process and curled like crazy uh but nonetheless the spirit was right uh, uh and it also included a brilliant and if you've never seen it it's the best thing wizards has ever made which is this little uh uh hundred life point counter that can uh uh, uh count up to a uh, hundred life you set it at 40 but it'll go up to 100 mm. i believe uh, and, and so you could have 67 life if you're like my wife playing with her life gain commander deck. And boy, isn't that frustrating? She's up to 67 life. And, you know, like you, typically your, your, your spin downs don't cut that. And so they've got a perfect 100 point life counter. They've got a, a blinged out all foil utility selection. It was loved. It was beloved. Oh, yeah. Uh, it was a great uh, And they product. printed five of it for each store. $200, got, by the way. Right. $200. And this is what should be coming out every year. It's called 100% reprints blinged out. It's called, this is once a year, we will take a look at a format such as Commander and we will ask ourselves, what are some cards that could be used as reprints in Commander that we wouldn't really want to reprint in Standard? And then we will go through and we will bling them out and we will offer them like these Commander Precon products so that people can go and buy their utility That would belt. make justice. That would make so much money. Right. And w that would not be disturbing the format at all. It would be equalizing it because right now the person who can afford to buy a uh, Imperial Recruiter has a major advantage over the, 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 the 11th grader <coughs> who can't. And if they started doing that, then the 11th grader can ask for the Commander's Arsenal for Christmas and get the Imperial Recruiter, and then suddenly Mr. Moneybag's computer programmer is on even footing with the 11th grade kid. The only and, thing... And, oh, I was going to say, the only thing that, yeah. that loses is uh, for newer players who come in and they want a deck right out of the gate. But there, 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 have, right. been so many, like, there have been so many, and I'm sure... There would be a way to make it so you could just just make a hundred percent reprint, even even if you made a new commander product every year. What if you made a hundred percent reprints besides the commander? Make new commanders. Do that. Like yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna do something, do that. Because no, what we need to do instead great. is we need to create commanders that now do things in the command zone. Uh, what we need to do is we need to start saying planeswalkers can be commanders, or maybe non-legendary creatures can be commanders, and and start muddling that mixture in that way. Because we need to come up with a new, now we need a new idea for next year. Okay, well let's make legendary you know planeswalkers that do their planeswalker abilities from the command zone. That's I, gonna work out great. I knew the second I saw Derevi, I'm like, this is it, commander's That's, done. There's oh, no come on. Uh, I mean, it's no like they. You're right. I mean, they. It's. It's a situation where magic, at least constructed magic, is so ever-changing that they can do so many different things with it. But Commander will always be Commander. And if you're going right. to print things that are universally good in Commander, they will never go away. Right. Never. That's the problem. And it's just... it. No, you're right. There's no... I don't know. They just got to stop, but they won't, so... Right. Okay. So we're in agreement on a lot of things that's uh, for this episode. Uh, yeah, that's weird. How Let's let's talk because we were talking about like what effect uh, the prices have on what needs right. to be reprinted. So, just how expensive is Commander? Is this a, a super expensive format where you need you know thousand? I mean, you could put together a mana base for Commander decks that cost thousands of dollars. Easily four figures. Yeah. Do you need fetch lands and dual lands in your Commander deck? Can you really sit down with a $25 pre-con deck and just play against quote unquote real commander decks? You know, what do you what do you think about commander prices? Uh from from I guess personal experience when I started playing, mm -hmm. uh when 
when Commander started and I built my vampire deck, minus like Cabal Coffers and Lake of the Dead, that deck was like $15 maybe. Right. Like average 30 cents per card maybe, if you're lucky. Uh, I don't think... I, I think the the financial barrier to entry to Commander is very low in general. Uh, based on my experience and based on a lot of the people I play with, they came in with almost nothing. They built whatever they had they built whatever they could with whatever they had and even if they needed cards most weren't that expensive uh i would say that a lot of people like to remember the outliers in commander that are very expensive most cards not that bad it's all of magic we're talking about here right like overall it's not that bad i think it's it's not i think it's more intimidating than expensive because 100 card yeah. deck uh but i think the barrier to entry is lower than the average person thinks it is now if that if you have a certain play group who's extremely competitive or if you're just whatever environment you're around is with people who have been there for years and, you know, you go around the table and you have Krenko, uh, Azami, like uh, Edric, um, you know, stuff like that, then that vampire deck that I built will get crushed. It just will. But but Krenko is a great example because Krenko is a commander who is uh, 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 you know four or five bucks I believe That's, yeah and and all you have to do is go on to magiccards.info and hit red goblin and enter and That's then true. pick out a, a selection of red goblins, all of which are going to be costing five cents, 10 cents, 25 cents. I guess that's not the best. Ex I mean, again, I think the deck is, an exception. I actually think that's a great example of just how affordable this format is overall, is because yeah. you listed it uh, just as a reaction, as a very overpowerful deck. And I could put that overpowerful Krenko deck together for 25, you 40 could. bucks. That's true. And I don't have to, and I also don't have to be some genius player because I can do it just by identifying that Krenko is going to be my commander and then sticking a whole bunch of goblins, in, stick a bunch of goblins and mountains in a deck and I can sit down with the big boys. Uh, and you know what? When you're in multiplayer, the very fact that you might not have that super well-known commander that can help makes you. you less of a target. Yeah, I, I sit down to multiplayer with Anawin. My wife might have sat down for a while there. Tristani was not considered. I don't quite know what the vibe on Tristani is these days. I don't see her that often. I haven't played against a Tristani. Yeah, uh, uh, but uh, I know that as soon as you know so you start gaining life, people look away. Like, oh, okay, whatever. You're not interacting with me. You're, you're gaining your lives. You're putting some rhino tokens in, some worms, and bleh, you know. And and then all of a sudden, everybody else gets eliminated, and you've got 300 life and a giant army. True. You know, there the, there's that law of commander as well that sometimes the less powerful deck ends up going up against the most powerful deck, which has already been diminished greatly by everyone else. And so it's got such complexity. Do you have original revised dual lands in your commander decks, Wedge? Uh, I'm, again, Angus McKenzie, I've been building for years, so yeah. Yes, okay. But I do didn't you, need them, is, is one of the points that I feel that if you make. sat down to play, like if we were, we were going to be in the same area and we're going to play some commander, and you slid out those, I would imagine, two to three revised duels from that deck and replace them with, I don't know, pain, oh, you probably also have the pain lands. Hell, tap lands, regular basics. It, would that even be noticeable in, in how that deck played? Not the vast majority of the time. One of the things yeah. I wanted to bring up was uh, land bases are notoriously expensive if you want the top end, but there right. are so many dual lands and land fixing in Magic. Yeah. You could, you're fine. Like you can make you're entire fine. mana bases no matter what your color combinations are. Like even if even if you're not confident in your lands, there are a billion artifacts that'll help you out at one mana. Like you're right. you're fine. It's you don't need it to be amazing at right. all. The idea when I see people posting help for like a new <coughs> player, and a new player says like, "Hey, I want to do this commander deck. Someone help me out." And they post, "Well, here's what you'd probably need to put together," and it's got like Mox Ruby on it, and 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 Savannah <laughs> on it. And I'm like, are you out of your mind? You do not need any moxes in Commander. You do not need any Power <coughs> 9 in Commander at all. You don't need the revised duels. If you've got that one deck like you've got and you really want everything to be optimized and you've got the resources to do it, 
fine. But you don't even need fetch lands. Fetch lands aren't doing much for a commander deck like they are for a standard modern or legacy deck. It's not the same system. You will be yeah. just fine with with a, a budget mana fixing and artifact ramp and creature mana fixing and ramp. No problem. I definitely think an important concept to commander is the idea of diminishing returns once you get to like the top. Like if with, with a budget build, you can probably build efficiency of your deck to like I mean, it's an arbitrary number. Let's say to 80%, just to prove my point. And that, you know, you get 80% of the way they're spending $20. To get to 90%, maybe you got to spend another $100. To get to 100%, you spend like 10K. Like this, we're talking about, it's definitely marginal in return. Uh, you can definitely get most of the way there with a lot of, without spending a lot of money at all. There are enough tools in Magic to do that. If you're talking about optimization, if that's your jam, then yeah, you're going to spend a crap load of money but you don't have to spend a crap load of money right. is the point. No, yeah, you can absolutely, like, that, again, the barrier to entry to Commander in general, very low. Unless you're against a bunch of people with 100% optimized decks that decide to play Riku and Animar all the time. And then, you know, right. maybe you're going to want to, not right. not personal or anything. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think the concept of Commander as an expensive, prohibitive expensive format is is very false yeah it's wrong i think overall. that that the way in which you and i first got into this format and that's another reason i don't want to start hating on the precon decks again but you know i remember digging through my piles of cards that i already had to put that first commander deck together looking through my binder and and making that first creation yeah. of a deck so we versus just going down to target and buying a, a pre-con deck and coming back and it's got all the perfect you know little setup of, of mana fixing for a three color deck or probably next year five color decks or who knows you know like four color man four no well what are you gonna do for four color just saying <laughs> just saying well yeah they're gonna oh oh no you're right they're gonna make four color commanders you know they will what's oh. they have to no. What's that? What are they going to do? They just made Planeswalkers commanders. They mentioned uh, the mending. They're running out of things to do. <laughs> right. But yeah, no. I, and, and so I think that going through your library and pulling out your cards to make your first deck is such a fun experience. I like that, yeah. I mean, yeah. it definitely makes me bias a little bit because I did it that way. Uh, which is why, again, when you asked me a while ago about whether or not I liked commander specific products... My gut reaction is to be against them because I like finding Teferi's moat in my random box of crap that I didn't use. That's cool. I like that. And yeah, it's, I'm definitely it work. biased to that. But I guess not everybody is, you know? Not everybody's into yeah. that. And I can't, you know, I can't speak for everybody. So, but I think that's what makes Commander so awesome is you give the value. You find the cards and you give them value. That's Absolutely. cool. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, how competitive is Commander then? Like, is is this a game that spikes play and take over or is this not for spikes is this a game where if you sit down with a win on turn three commander deck where you're going to not be invited back next week uh, how competitive <laughs> is commander i mean games can take hours upon That's hours true. to play in multiplayer and yet you can design decks i could go onto the internet right now and find multiple decks that are designed to go off and win consistently on the third turn. Yeah. So how do you reconcile these two things? Uh, is this a competitive format? Are we ever going to see actual, like, like, are we going to see a, 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 a GP that's for Commander? I mean... I, are, I don't are we think we'll ever get to that no, point. Just no. the variance is too high. Um, right. But that's a big question. I mean... Anything can be made to be competitive. It's com I think it's completely subjective. You can't put an entire label on Commander as being competitive. What what I can say is it's definitely a format that is designed... Like, it, it'll be more competitive or less competitive based on who you're with at any given yeah. moment. I mean, we've got... Like, I have a friend who has, an, has a very casual Sakashima the Imposter deck, which is hilarious and takes a while to get going. But once it does, it's hysterical and you'll never win. But you can't put that up against, you know, my other friend who plays a zombie and will just crush right. you. Right. That can't happen. And they they both know that, right? So they both right. have other decks that are meant to play each other. 
Uh, it's, it's, you know, Commander is one of the most customizable formats. It is the most customizable format in Magic. And I think its level of competitiveness is a reflection of that. It's completely mm-hmm. subjective. There's, I can't put a label on it for everyone. It's just impossible. I feel that Commander is a format where you have to look at the deck that you are playing and the way in which you are playing and be 100% honest with yourself and say, am I playing a super competitive Commander deck? Am I playing a mostly competitive Commander deck? Am I playing a less competitive but still strong commander deck and you must have that discussion with the people you are playing with Agreed. and you must have even ground even footing and if you've got a win on turn three deck then you make sure that everyone sitting down with you isn't just aware of that because i've seen people say oh hey i just want to <coughs> let you know i've got a shroom deck that's going to go off turn three and and win and people go oh, okay we better you know like try and and it's like no wait a minute do you have an equally powerful deck because if you don't then you're not going to have a good time and i'll tell you the truth that spiky player is going to have less of a good time than if they sat down against the other spiky highly competitive decks and you have to be honest that's why i opened up with saying that it's a lot of fun if everybody maybe does the old elder dragon commander and everyone at the table is doing that having those games and having those systems with your play group where everybody choose a ravnica guild leader and stay with ravnica uh cards from either of the two ravnica blocks or where the flavor text mentions Ravnica or one of the guilds, that's the rule for our construction. And we're going to sit down and have this this really even-footed game because of that rule. Or I know play groups that say no tutors. I know play groups that, that make those rules to keep things even grounded. And those play groups meet more regularly yep. and consistently have more fun as opposed to just sitting down and everybody's on different footing. Nobody knows what they're doing in terms of interaction, not in terms of playing. I don't mean that in terms of, I don't know what I'm doing in terms of playing, but I mean in terms of I've got a sapling deck and you've got a Sharoom deck and that is no matchup whatsoever. Uh, uh, and and that's not going to be fun. No, I, I For totally either agree. of us. It's, yeah. I think Commander takes, because uh, this when I was younger, this happened just playing casually, right? This is, it escalated, escalated, escalated till someone's deck was just stupid, right? Way right. better than anybody else's casual deck. And then they would either one have to stop playing it or the others would have to, you know, get to that level. There's an equilibrium there. For the play groups that I've been in, all of them, they would just ban commanders. Right. They would just outright ban commanders, not mechanics, nothing else, commanders specifically. And it made, it makes sense for where you are. But you need to realize that if you go up again, like if you decide to go to your, you know, game store and go against a random person, there's no expectation of fairness between decks at all. But if you're right. in a play, that's why having a play group is so nice because you can decide the power level of where you are. Like, and it's like that. That's why it's so hard to decide if commander's competitive because it is if you want it to be. Right. It, it is wherever you want it to be at any given moment. As long as the other people around you agree with the exact same thing. Define your terms. Define your environment. Commander is probably at its worst when you are getting a random game with random people you don't know and and just sitting down for that first time ever. I don't like that. That drives me nuts. Neither do I. Like, I can't go to, like, a... Because they have... At, you know, GPs, they have, um, you know, commander side events and stuff. I don't know how Why would I do that? I... I mean, one, Angus McKenzie is not, you know, if there were tier decks, it's not like a tier one strategy. But even if it was, I don't want to go, I don't know who I'm against. I might be against that Azami player that can turn three, like, random infinite card draw with wizards. I don't right. know. And it's, it's without having that history or a reference, I don't know. It's, Commander's more, Commander games to me are more of an experience than just a game. Because yeah. they take so long and you put a lot into it. Uh, but again, I think, I that think isn't that the same a, for everyone though. So I think that a spiky, highly competitive player can play and enjoy commander as long as they are playing with other spiky, I agree. highly competitive players, or perhaps imposing limits on themselves, such as saying, I, I'm going to self restrict. So I'm going mm. to build a deck with the intent of winning, but I'm going to do it without tutors or I'm going to do it without, I, I, I have, uh, I know someone that I play with. And he intentionally uh, never brings his commander into play, and mm. so he chose a uh, 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 he chose a five color commander, 
and built the deck he wants to build. And the rule is, is he will never, under any circumstance, bring the commander into play. And that's and that's how he and then he goes wild with that deck. But he's essentially playing Highlander and multiplayer on his end. And he, and because he makes such crazy decks just by themselves, that he he justifies it with, well, I never bring the commander in, and it actually does help even the footing quite a lot. Yeah, I, he's I, just sitting down with a Highlander deck. I definitely want to make sure that that viewers understand. I'm not against competitive commander at all i'm, I'm not super competitive. one of the, one of the I've best got a taste of deck for yeah sake. like one of the yeah. one of the best games i ever seen i've ever seen was uh an edric player versus a riku player Ooh, it was insane like we're talking about yeah. two nearly optimized decks watching watching 1v1 commander at like really high level quote unquote of optimization it is it, it is nuts and i'm not against that at all i'm just saying that when you play commander make sure that you understand where you're at when you're playing any level's fine. Just make sure yeah. everyone else is there too. Yeah, uh, yeah, and that's is, why yeah. play groups. That's why play groups are important. Yeah, forming that agree. play group, and ultimately with commander, the final thing that I want to say on this subject is commander is uh, something to do with people that you want to hang out with for hours on end, eating pizza, drinking soda, watching TV in the background, or listening to music in the background, and it's it's an activity that lets you interact with those people and hang out with them because it does go on can go on for hours yeah. upon hours to play in multiplayer so make sure you're doing it with people that you like and enjoy and know and that you can set those limits yeah or no limits but that you have established those rules for yeah, it's definitely optimizing the commander experience it's very similar if if you want an external if you want an example that isn't magic take a game like um Cards Against Humanity or Apples to Apples, you right. play those games with people you know because you they probably understand your sense of humor or th right. what you care about. And it's it's definitely about that relationship more than a lot of other you know I'm factors that from a standard playing game. Apples to, I'm banned from playing Apples to Apples mm -hmm. with any of my friends. What'd with you do? For friends. Well, apparently, I'm the only one who likes to play that game by the rules. So oh, all these, I actually... so. Everybody, all my friends and my wife, they'll get a card and, and, and you know, it'll say something like, you know, uh, something romantic. And, and so I will submit, you know, a moonlit evening. I'll but submit they will bubbles. <laughs> right. No, they'll still choose something like, you know, uh, a, a zombie infestation. Ha, 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 ha. And then I'll be like, but that is not romantic. And I'll like oh look it up. Oh, my God. And, I want to. I've called the dictionary and I'll be like, Are look at the word kidding? romantic. Well, that's not fair. What do you mean it's not, not the game. Fair? <laughs> They're selecting a card for apples to apples that does not meet the criteria. You're supposed to make the best selection, not the funniest selection. I think you should make the selection based on the person whose well, answer I'm it is. I'm banned from playing because I and so when then they always know how to do me where it's like get the most precise you know, uh, a card that fits that definition because that's, <laughs> but that's supposed to be apples to apples. I want to end with one final commander question right, for you, Wedge. Right. Who is the worst commander ever made? What is the worst commander ever? Okay, I, there, for me, there's a slam dunk, 100% objective answer. I bet it's the one I chose. Hakan Stromgald Scourge. Oh, okay. It's not the one I not chose. Not the one. Okay, for, for okay. those of you who don't know and want to hate magic, uh, Hakon Stromgald Scourge is one colorless, two black, three, three legendary zombie knight. You may play him from your graveyard, but not from anywhere else. As long as he's in play, you may play knight cards from your graveyard. And when he's put in the graveyard from play, you lose two life. This guy is useless beyond useless. Wait, wait, if you can only play him from your graveyard, can you play him from the command zone? No, because it specifically says your graveyard. It's like, I've... So this is a command, and, and uh, so this is a commander that you can't ever play. You cannot play it at wow. all. I think you might have won. I thought I had a slam. Yeah, on, but, <laughs> but you can actually play my commander. So that seems pretty good. Well, wow. I I have a backup. So let, 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 I want to hear you. All right. Oh, so well, I have a backup too. I, so I really let me like do my, my main. Yeah, go ahead. All right, my main for worst commander ever is Isamaru, the Hound of Konda. <laughs> This is a legendary creature, hound, one white for a 2-2 vanilla. There's nothing else. Oh, there's no first strike. There's no haste. It's a 2-2 it's a for one, legendary. Nothing else to True. it. And it's mono white. So you'd have to have a mono white deck. 
your commander does nothing. Your commander, but you could bring it into play turn one. It's true. You can. So actually, I think that that you win round one. You're what do you? What's you? You do? No, absolutely. I I absolutely yield to that being the worst commander ever made because you can't play him. Yeah, he's he's pretty bad unless some crazy ruling change that I don't know about. Uh, he's command zone is not your graveyard. Yeah. Um, all right. So my, my second one uh, is Sirsu Demir Lobotomist. Now I really I hate this card for. <laughs> Two colorless, one blue, one black, two, three legendary human wizard. Whenever you play a blue spell, basically exile the top card of target library from the game. Whenever yeah. you play a black spell, remove the top card of target library from the game. Your opponents can't play non-land cards with the same name as a card removed from the game with with Sirsu. That's just why I hate the card. I just don't like it. It the, the last ability is completely meaningless. You're not gonna you're not but gonna mill somebody. With Sirsu. That's not the commander you're playing. Hang on, hang on. But in multiplayer, is the wording, I don't have it in front of me, is the wording on the card your opponents can't play cards exiled with Sirsu? Your opponents can't cast non-land cards with the same name as a card ex... Oh, actually, yeah, that's not as bad, then. I'm in multiplayer. Yeah, I opponents... exile a card from your library. Good it's point. A soul... It's a soul... Oh, the soul ring. <laughs> Everyone... No one can play no soul No one can play that. No, 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 no. That... It... I mean, it's not, it's terrible. Listen, I'm not it's arguing so that the card isn't terrible, but here's the here's worse. Yeah, I think I win worse. round two. All right, all right. Oris, Samite Guardian. It is two white, this. one colorless, for a legendary creature, human cleric, one three, tap to prevent all damage that would be be dealt to target creature this turn, period. And then it has Grandeur. <laughs> grandeur means discard another card named Oris, Samite Guardian. And target player can't play spells <laughs> this turn, and creatures that player controls can't attack this turn. But you can't discard another card named Aura Samite Guardian. <laughs> so basically, it's a commander that you can tap to prevent all damage to target creature. <coughs> so you can do it once per per yeah, entire I mean, you know, turn. Yeah, could be but worse. it's I I, I yeah. <laughs> That's pretty. I just, I just hate Sirsu. any of the grandeur. They it. did a grandeur for every color. They did, uh, yeah. uh, uh, and any of the grandeur, it's worthless in commander because it needed another legendary of the same name in hand. Right. So you can't do that. See, I, when I was making this list, my 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 original second worst card is uh, Phage the Untouchable, but mm -hmm. the backlash is going to be insane because people are like, "Well, you, there are ways around the trigger." I don't care. That's a trap. Yeah. That is a trap. You're asking for people to kill you. That's what you're doing. There's you're giving up way too much to play Phage. Like it's it's mono black. Like you could play anything else. If your whole deck is based around getting Phage into play, you're gonna die. You're gonna die. I that that's my real suck. I had to mention it because I was so mad. I'm so mad about it. But the flaming is gonna be real because there are people who love her to death. Is I just hate Sirsu. I just hate I hate it. Yeah. Is there a is there a legend from Legends that you wish was actually better? Angus McKenzie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I wish Ramirez de Petro was really good because he's got such flavor. Oh, where's the I gotta get the name right. Uh Ramirez de Petro, three colorless, two black, and a blue for a four three first strike. The end. But I just wish like this pirate legend it could be so awesome if they had just right. done something that is ramirez de petro is a most flamboyant pirate be careful not to believe his tall tales especially <laughs> when you especially when you ask his age Ooh, my goodness <laughs> i'm looking for one card and i can't think ah oh, whatever i can't find it yeah, yeah, um, yeah there's my... actually wait there is a card from ice age a legend uh marieke Ribery, i think her yeah, name is. she's great i love her I hate her being a one one gets gets me killed all the time. Like yeah. like I, I have a friend who plays uh Sen triplets and another friend who plays uh oh my goodness, I can't remember the name of it. I'm gonna get punched in the face. Wow, that's bad. But they, they just put that card in the deck just because they really like it. Dies every time. Yeah. Dies every time. It's it's too weak. I just wish it was more than a one one. That's all I want. It's more than yeah. a two two. I think she. I think she's underrated. She was on she my is list underrated. of underrated commanders. I think uh, Tetsuya Umazawa is also another 
contender for underrated. One he's, of my friends has an Umizawa deck. Yeah, you know, it's it's actually a really good ability. He's red, black, and a blue for a 3-3. Three, three. He's a little costly on that ability. He's a legendary. Yeah. Uh, he's two black, red, and a blue to tap to destroy target tapped creature or target blocking creature, but he also has hexproof. He can't be the... T oh, no, no, no. He's no. It's not hexproof, is it? It's the tar he can't be targeted by an enchantment spell. Ow. Oh. Right. Oh my goodness. Yeah, but they can still lightning bolt him. Yeah. I mean, yeah, my, my, my we... same friend who played that also played Toshiro. Okay. Uh, Umizawa. He built that one first. And yeah. it just wasn't um, customizable enough. You know, Mono yeah. Black, what are you going to do? But yeah. yeah, no, he just loves Umizawa. Loves it. What's the topic for next week's podcast, Wedge? Uh, I think the viewers should decide. I think the viewers should decide as well. So let's do a vote in the description. I'm sorry, in the comments of this video. It's going to be a riot. Post, <laughs> post your vote for what you want the topic of the next dies to removal to be. And we will try and go with the most asked for thing or the spirit of the most asked for thing. So if we get a lot of questions that are kind of different, but are broadly asking for the same sort of topic, we will abide by that spirit of what the viewers have asked for. So tell us what you want the topic for episode five to be, and that will be the if, topic of episode five, to the best of our ability. Yeah, if, if, we if, reserve uh, the right to make make minor tweaks and changes, but we want to do what yeah, you ask true. us to do. Uh, I mean, there are we, we, we reserve the right if something weird happens. Something weird. If, if you see a comment you like, because I, I enjoy this, Thumbs up it. That's what it's there for. Yeah, that it's, helps. It'll yeah, be do way that easier up. for us to figure out intensity of liking uh, if you actually like it. Uh, but right. please tell us. Like, we, we read the comments all the time. Like, that's basically what I do for a living. So, If anyone listening to this is not yet subscribed to The Mana Source, because this week mm -hmm. it's on my channel, make sure you subscribe to The Mana Source. Follow him on Twitter. What's your Twitter handle? Uh, I got YouTube.com slash The Mana Source. Twitter dot com slash the mana source facebook dot com slash the mana source links will be in the description for everything I and see. you're also streaming again on oh, Twitch. what's your stream schedule yeah, uh, i don't stream so if you guys like streaming i might show up on a few of his streams but if you guys like streaming tell them tell them where they can find you wedge uh, twitch.tv slash guess the mana source mondays and there wednesdays you go. Mondays and Wednesdays, 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Tuesdays and Thursdays, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Be there. We'll hug. It'll be great. Just Professor will be there. I'll drag him. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do. But I'm gonna do unscheduled, unscheduled. special pop up. Unscheduled special pop up guest. Like a appearance. ninja. So, so you might as well. You might as well subscribe to Wedge on Twitch just because mm -hmm. I might show up. If you haven't already followed me on Facebook and Twitter, please, please, please be so kind. Do that. Thank you for joining us this week, everyone. Thanks so Thank much. Thank you for joining for us. For listening. Oh, my goodness.